right, so today we're going to talk about nutrient cycles. Here's a really cool thing. Absolutely nothing in nature is created or destroyed. It just changes forms. So everything that exists now existed back when the dinosaurs were and existed back millions of years before the dinosaurs were. Um, matter just does not get created or destroyed. It just changes forms. Every ecosystem, all ecosystems out there, have substances that change forms as the substance interacts with the ecosystem. So whatever that thing is, whether it's carbon or nitrogen or water, it's going to just interact, certain things are going to happen to it, and then the form is going to change. Matter moves through an ecosystem in a cycle because that substance is going to change form indefinitely over time, and it's just going to keep changing, 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 changing. So it's a cycle that's always constantly going through um, and never really ending. So we're going to start with the water cycle. And water is going to move through an ecosystem in three forms, and you know these as our three states of matter. We've got liquid, gas, and solid. Um, there is, incidentally, a fourth state of matter called plasma, but we're not going to talk about that because that's just crazy pants and your physics teacher can talk to you about that. Um, so you guys are probably familiar with the water cycle. You've probably learned about this since, you know, first grade all the way through junior high, different variations. I might throw in a couple new things that you haven't heard before, but for the most part, it's going to be stuff you already know. So you know that liquid water, whether it's um, coming from oceans or lakes or rivers or thing, even just puddles out in the parking lot, can evaporate. And evaporation means that it's changing from liquid to a gas. And so that water, because of the sun's energy heating it up, that water is going to go from liquid form to gas form. We've also got groundwater, and groundwater is going to move up through the roots of plants. It'll get used by the plant, and then it's going to get excreted, meaning just kicked off, uh, in a process called transpiration. Transpiration. So transpiration is really just a fancy word for evaporation coming off of plant leaves. So then what's going to happen is that that water gas is going to sort of clump together in the atmosphere to form clouds, and that's a process called condensation. So condensation is when that, those gassy water molecules are going to clump together and we're going to get um, liquid droplets again. And what's kind of cool about clouds is that they're actually little liquid drops of water sitting on particles of dust, and they're all clumped together up there in the sky for us. And then that liquid water is going to fall back to the ground in the form of snow or rain called precipitation. Now, of course, if it's snow, it has already turned back into a solid again, um, or it has turned into a solid. Uh, and this is precipitation, and there are different forms of precipitation, uh, but really you need to know the generic term precipitation means that the water is falling back to earth. That liquid water is then going to run down the hills and mountains and get to larger bodies of water, and that's called runoff. So you've got the liquid water that's up at the top of the hills and mountains. It might be snow that then melts, and then it's going to run down and get to the larger bodies, and that's runoff. So then we get back to that whole process again, where now you've got that liquid water in a plant or I'm sorry, in a lake or a pond or a stream or an ocean or a puddle, and it's going to get evaporated back up again either directly or through the plants. I like this slide because it has this fancy evapotranspiration word on it. Uh, and then the condensation happens, and then the precipita precipitation happens, and then you've got the runoff. Notice that this diagram also shows you infiltration over here, where you've actually got the water that goes down and filters through the earth uh, down to get into, there, there are different um, uh, reservoirs of water underneath the ground, not just where we can see them. And so that will happen as well. So there you go, that's the water cycle. All right, now we have the carbon cycle. Again, the carbon cycle is something that you are probably familiar with. You just don't realize you're familiar with it. So carbon dioxide, we all know about carbon dioxide, is found in large quantities in the atmosphere. So there's a lot of it just in the air floating around. And organisms that we call producers 
are going to take in the carbon dioxide for something that we call photosynthesis. Now, I'm guessing you've all heard about photosynthesis because everybody talks about photosynthesis when they're in kindergarten and they have a little styrofoam cup and they push their seed into the dirt and then the plant grows and you know the things that the plant needs for uh, in order to grow. It needs water and it needs the carbon dioxide coming out of the air. So when we talk about things like photosynthesis, don't get caught up in the big fancy words. Get caught up in that you already know what's going on here. This is from way back when you were in kindergarten. It's all the same stuff. But we're not talking about the water here. We're talking about the carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide goes into the organisms um, and they perform photosynthesis. Then what happens is these other animals that we are animals that we call consumers are going to come along and eat the producers. Get it? They consume the other plants and they're going to eat the producers and they might eat some other consumers as well. For example, um, a fox might eat a mouse um, or an owl might eat a vole. And so that's a consumer eating another consumer. And that transfers the carbon. So the carbon is going to get bumped up to that next organism in the chain. All organisms, not just plants, all organisms, not just animals, all organisms are going to perform a process called respiration. And respiration is not exactly uh, what you think it is. There are a couple different kinds of respiration, but let's keep it simple right now and think of it as what you think it is where we're going to release carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. And if you think about just humans exhaling, that's sending CO2 back into the atmosphere. Now, obviously, we don't hear our plants sighing big breaths all the time. That's why I say it's slightly different than what you think it is. Um, but let's imagine plants sighing big breaths for now because they kind of do. Um, and that releases that carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. Now, that carbon dioxide can also be dissolved in the ocean. And that's where photosynthesis and respiration are performed by marine organisms. So that CO2 is in the atmosphere and it's also in the ocean. So all organisms are using carbon and cycling it through. Organisms are gonna die and decompose, and that's where their remains over millions of years are gonna get turned into fossil fuels. It takes a very long time, obviously. Um, fossil fuels can then be burned by cars and factories um, and for energy in a process called combustion. And that's gonna put carbon dioxide back up into the atmosphere. And once again, here we are in our cycle where our carbon dioxide has gotten back to the place where it started. So I love this picture because the cute little cow. Um, so you've got your um, decomposing matter, putting the CO2 into the other organisms. Look at that poor little birdie. Um, the animals are gonna eat the plants that grow and that's gonna contain carbon dioxide. The animals are gonna respire and that's going to give off the carbon dioxide. There's also combustion happening that's gonna give off the carbon dioxide. That carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is gonna go into the green plants that are going to absorb the carbon dioxide. Also the grass is a green plant that's gonna absorb the carbon dioxide. And then here back we are again. Um, so we've got all of these different things happening to contribute to the cycling of carbon through the atmosphere. Now there are some human issues that go along with the carbon cycle. One of them is pollution. If we're burning too many fossil fuels, we're going to add too much carbon dioxide to that atmosphere. So some of that carbon needs to stay down in the ground. And that's just for a good balance on Earth. There's also deforestation. So if we're cutting down trees, that means less carbon dioxide is going to get absorbed from the atmosphere. Again, we're ruining that balance. We need to have the right amounts of carbon dioxide out in the atmosphere and the right amounts of carbon dioxide stored within the earth. And deforestation is making sure that carbon dioxide stays up in our atmosphere and isn't getting pulled out of our atmosphere by plants so that then it can get used by the animals and uh, other consumers out there. Okay, so where this really becomes a problem with things being out of whack is our human issues that we're creating. Because of pollution and deforestation, we're putting too much carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. And we're trapping too much of that heat, and that's a bad thing. So our planet's temperatures are getting all out of whack, and that's causing climate change. 
Now, we used to call this global warming because there is um, a slight increase of the global temperature over time, but really we're finding all kinds of other consequences. So natural disasters are happening where they weren't ordinarily happening. We're actually seeing places that are getting cooler even though they shouldn't be getting cooler, things that are getting warmer even though you know they shouldn't be getting warmer. And so all kinds of things are happening that shouldn't be happening. And so we're calling it climate change as opposed to global warming because it really is this big issue of all kinds of things happening, not just Earth getting warmer. All right, and the last cycle we're gonna talk about is the nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen makes up about 78% of the Earth's atmosphere, but it's in a form that the vast majority of organisms can't use, sad face. So there's nitrogen everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. But all of these organisms are like, nitrogen, nitrogen, I wanna use you. But the nitrogen's like, ha ha ha, I'm in a form you can't use. Luckily, we have different types of bacteria that are going to perform this process called nitrogen fixation in the soil and on plant roots, and that's going to make the nitrogen usable. So nitrogen fixation is going to happen with these bacteria, and this is your first plug of the school year, and you will hear more about how bacteria are not evil, horrible things. Bacteria are actually really helpful to us, and we need to stop giving bacteria such a bad rap, and we need to stop killing off every bacteria we meet, because there are a lot of bacteria that are very useful to us, and we need them. And in fact, bacteria are what make it so that we can use nitrogen. So then some other bacteria come along and they take that fixed nitrogen and they're going to convert it to yet another form. And then, yay, we're into a place where the produce, producers can use that new form of nitrogen. So remember, the producers are things like plants or algae that's floating around in the ocean, um, lots of green things that are going to help us out. They're going to use that nitrogen. And then consumers are going to come along and eat the producers. And so as the consumers eat the producers, that nitrogen gets transferred to the consumers, just like it did with the carbon, just like the carbon got transferred from the producers to the consumers. Now that nitrogen is going to get, it's going to get transferred. All of the organisms, whether they are producers or consumers, are going to die. And as they die, decomposers are going to come along and eat them up, and they're going to release that nitrogen either back into the atmosphere or back into the soil. Another kind of bacteria is going to convert that nitrogen back into a nitrogen gas in a process called denitrification. Look at that word. It's awesome. Denitrification. What a good word. So denitrification is going to convert that bacteria back into something that can get stored in the atmosphere again. Sometimes lightning is going to help out a little with nitrogen fixation. So we said bacteria do most of it, but lightning can actually do some of it. So if we look at this diagram, we have lightning sending that nitrogen down into the soil. We have nitrogen fixing bacteria that are going to convert that nitrogen that was in the atmosphere, going to convert that, that nitrogen into things that the plants can use. The plants are going to use it send it to the consumers. The consumers are either going to poop or they're going to die, and that's going to send it back into the soil again. And sometimes denitrification is going to happen. The denitrifying bacteria are going to send that nitrogen back up into the atmosphere. Now, once again, humans are going to sometimes screw things up. And so what we do is we take nitrogen from one place and we put it in another place. So we might add nitrogen to an ecosystem, a specific ecosystem, by using fertilizers. So we'll go to one ecosystem and get some fertilizers, generally in the form of animal poop, and then we'll take it to another ecosystem and we'll dump it down. And sometimes we can kind of um, cause some problems in our ecosystems by putting fertilizers in places where they weren't before because then that nitrogen again throws off, throws off the balance and you might end up with some problems in your area, either um, in farms that are nearby uh, or um, in streams that are nearby. And you can end up causing some problems if you're not being careful about your fertilizers. So there you go. There are your three cycles, the water cycle, the carbon cycle, and the nitrogen cycle. There are, of course, other cycles out there, the phosphorus cycle, for example. But these are the three that we're really going to uh, worry about in biology. So uh, make sure you go study those and understand what's going on.